Good morning. And welcome to Winnipeg. Now, we are almost done step 11 here, but I've got to make a correction. Andy Whitaker drew to my attention the fact that it was not a gun that would go in these gun tubs. Those were not gun tubs. That's where were a, a site, like uh, part of the, uh, I guess you'd call it the director control or direction control or whatever. There would have been at least one person in there moving some sort of a device around, aiming it at the incoming aircraft, which would then likely in turn be connected to these guns that were in, in here. And it and uh, the guys that were working the guns probably had nothing to do with aiming them. They just had, you know, they were just busy uh, uh, loading uh, ammunition clips into them. Uh, yeah, so I was wondering about that afterwards, if maybe there was not, not a gun in there, because I was thinking it, it's kind of small, you know. You would think that it would have been bigger if there was a some kind of like a, a 20 millimeter gun in there or something. Anyway... Okay, I thought I'd better correct that. Uh, w when we move back over here, maybe I'll get one of the parts and we'll just drop it down there. Well, actually, we will be actually dropping the parts down when we uh, get a couple of pages ahead. Like when we go to step 12 here, we're, we're moving back to the stern and dropping a bunch of small stuff down. A whole bunch of M1, M1s again. And some life rafts or Carly floats. But... Uh, what we're going to be doing uh, this morning is there, there looks like there's about eight more M1s to go down. We've already done enough videoing of that, but we've got a couple of K20s, these, these little guys here. And uh, yeah, there's some, some kind of a davit, I guess, um, or a hoist. I was, I was noticing they're going right here. I can't think of what on earth it is they do. Uh, unless it had something to do with the, it's possible it has something to do with the uh, gang gangway that goes down the side. I better, I better peruse ahead a little bit in the manual and see if that's in fact what it is. Because if if it's supposed to help support that, I don't want to have these things glued aiming the wrong way. Because right now, it, it almost appears that they are supposed to go, sort of arcing back. And, and not over the edge of the, of the side of the gunnel. Uh, anyway, now, uh, yesterday I forgot to talk about the uh, air compressor. <laughs> I remember I was saying that I'd made some sort of redneck remarks about it. Well, uh, I'll try and remember to finish up on that today. Um, uh, we had a, a hazy sunrise, nothing special. Uh, you know, it was, I've been up for quite a while, and when I got up this morning, I thought we might be having a really nice sharp sunrise because I could see that the that the moon was casting a shadow into the of the house into the backyard, and it was quite distinct. So I thought, okay, we might have a sunrise, but I didn't didn't notice anything. Uh, oh, I got the. Uh, let me reach over here. The uh, case. For, for my uh, cell phone came and what and it's a lot easier now if I've got it in my pocket you know it's it's quite easy now to just grab it and pull it out there's there's less chance of it slipping out of my hands the the back is sort of uh, it, it's not like uh, it's not like uh, silicone rubber not that's not sticky like that but it, at least it's not slippery and what is really nice about it is and you probably can't notice it but there's a bit of a uh, on, on this cell phone, there was a basil that sticks out from the back of the phone, and then the lenses are mounted in that for the cameras, and it, it was quite easily scratched. Now this this case has a, has a uh, you might say another basil that goes around that raises it up about oh I'm guessing looking at it here I'd say it's maybe almost a millimeter. Anyway, it's enough so that if I was to lay the phone down on a hard surface like this. The, uh, the the basil isn't going to get scratched, and more importantly, the lenses aren't going to get scratched, unless there was something sticking up on the, the surface. But I'm, I'm going to try and be careful. Um, okay, uh, let's uh, recompose here and uh, uh, try and get some parts glued down here today. Oh, did I did I mention that uh, today is going to be the uh, 
uh, the last uh, day for the Christmas lights. Today is Ukrainian Christmas here in Winnipeg, and probably most of the world. Uh, <clears throat> although, I, from what I've read, is that the uh, Ukrainian Christmas is being moved more or less to December the 25th. Now, I don't know if that's uh, Western propaganda or if it's uh, actually true. Uh, so, uh, yeah, today's the last day, so tomorrow we take down the Christmas lights. Isn't that amazing? It's it's almost like yesterday we just switched them on, and I was, in fact, I was saying things like, uh, uh, in a couple of days we'll be able to turn our Christmas lights on, and now I'm saying we're going to be taking them down. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> okay, now let's uh, get recomposed. Okay, in order to find out if these uh, davits actually uh, support anything, like like the uh, gangway or the companionway or ladder, whatever it's called, I keep forgetting, I had to go all the way ahead to step 47 here. And uh, it looks to me as though I had thought that possibly this lower part of the ladder would have been supported possibly by these. But you can see here that that you know that it's not, and as near as I can tell, these things are positioned so that they are out o looking out over the side of the ship. Uh, the I don't think it would be real serious if they were in any other direction, because as near as I can tell, they're n they don't actually support anything. Um, Here you can see in the back, we've got the same thing going on here, and uh, yeah, it, it shows that this part here actually ends up going right there and fastens onto the side of the of the uh, of the hull somehow. So uh, okay, I think I beat that to death, didn't I? Okay, sorry to do this to you, but uh, I flipped the page, and it's actually clearer on in step 48. And it looks to me as though these things are positioned in such a way that they may be not coming out over the sides of of the of the of the hull, but they might be sort of angled back. You might say parallel with, with the with the gunnel. Um, once again, it's not. I don't think it's that important. I just wanted to show you. Okay. So this, you can see there's three little holes here. Well, it goes in the most aft hole. I've got to be careful how I say that. Okay, uh, one of the viewers had suggested a name for our little sailor friend here. I think I'd said something about we could call him Sailor Gabe. But uh, somebody had suggested Barnacle Bill. And I think that's what we'll call it. It's kind of a cute little thing, Barnacle Bill. There's even, there's even a song about Barnacle Bill. So anyway, oh, and uh, our, our friend uh, Tony in Toronto, uh, he suggested <clears throat> the name Hank. Now, what, the reason I'm mentioning that is because Tony also mentioned that he's got himself the Pache H airbrush. And he's going to try it out, and I'm very anxious to, uh, you know, hear what he's got to say about it. Because if you remember, I used to refer to Tony as Five Airbrush Tony, <laughs> and he was a huge help to us way back in the Bismarck days when I was first starting to, uh, you know, uh, airbrush and stuff like that. We got a lot of suggestions from Tony, so I sort of revere him as the. Uh, guru of airbrush if there's such a thing anyway we're gonna have to put down eight of our m1s and uh, our k20 here so i'm going to recompose here and get in a little closer and we'll glue in our uh, k20 and i think the way i'm going to have it is uh, i'm going to have it so that it is coming out over the side of the of the ship so it could drop something down it's the most logical thing uh, and these other two holes, they are for something that we are going to be doing, I think, in step uh, 13 or 14. 
it'll be part of that gangway that go, goes down the side. And then I think after we get some of these, like the, these in place, I should maybe put a hoop across because uh, uh, there'd be a, a danger of, of accidentally catching something on this, like a camera cord or something like that. Uh, okay, enough chatter. Okay. Now, I imagine you can see that too. You can see the seam line on the pedestal part of this. I ashamedly admit that I don't do a very good job. Uh, if I had a, if I had a seen that when I was nipping this piece off the uh, sprue, I, I probably would have taken around the edge of my knife along it and so on. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really sorry for you guys that are really into, you know, doing a really nice job and properly removing seam lines and stuff like that. And then you're watching me, you know, do my close-ups and, and showing how, how terrible, you know, I'm doing this. Okay, this, this is going to fit quite good. I shouldn't have any problem with that. Um, maybe I'll use the thicker glue on that. And what I'm going to try to do this time is I'm going to, instead of trying to put the glue on the deck, I'm going to just put it on the part. I know that has been suggested. And um, and I do sometimes do that. It's not, you know, I don't know why I don't do it more actually. Okay, let's let's uh, recompose. Maybe I'll uh, put the macro lens on and uh, so that you can see the uh, seam line really good. Oh, for heaven's sakes! Okay, this is the uh, Tamiya regular. That looks to be pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I don't think poking at it is going to help it unless I was to maybe push down on it and try and fit it a little closer. See, I have to come at it a little bit more square. Let me move my uh, glue bottle here. Grab onto it a little bit more square so it doesn't twist. I just wanted to give a little pressure down. Okay, let's leave that alone. And maybe we better uh, get ourselves in a, uh, a wire hoop to sort of protect that, because that will catch on everything. Okay, last time we used this was on the Rodney. And it's almost exactly the right uh, spread outness. Uh, maybe we'll just turn it this way so it slopes back. Yeah, I think I can more or less work around that. And now if something, you know, the idea is if I have a wire or something drag over it, it's not going to catch on our part. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead now and place down the, the M1s. I think there's eight of them we need. And I'll put the other one of these on the other side here. Just, just get this quickly done off camera. Okay, if you'll recall when I was putting some of the M1s in place further up the bow, uh, I was having a problem getting the pegs to fit in the holes. So we've got 16 little holes here. I'm just going to quickly enlarge enlarge them here. I've got a bit that's approximately four thousandths of an inch larger than the peg. And it, it, it should be small enough that it's not going to allow the part to flop around, but it will make it a lot easier to place. Okay, you get the idea. Okay, we've got all our little uh, ammo containers on now. And uh, I've had a disaster here again, right where I'm pointing. Yeah, the uh, Tamiya thick. <laughs> I was using it to put in the holes and I guess some dripped off on me. 
uh, same same kind of disaster that I had over on this side somewhere. Now the only good news is this is going to be the side that's against the back of the case and there will be some kind of superstructure going on here which is going to help to block w block this. So I'm, I'm not going to try and fix it. Um, I'm, no, I'm not going to try and fix it. I'm just going to leave it. And there's no use putting uh, one of the little uh, sailors right there because it, it probably won't, will not be seen from the other side anyway. I want to save those for you know the, where they where they can actually be seen. So a barnacle bill will not be placed there. In other words, okay, let's uh, flip the page here and uh, move back. Okay, before we flip the page, I just wanted to mention that uh, drilling the holes in the deck made it a lot easier getting these M1s in place. I'm going to have to remember to do that when we uh, get to step 12 here. Because there's going to be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, there's, yeah, about 14, 15 more M1s that go on. And then the Carly floats. Um, oh, and uh, a couple more of these K20s. All right, uh, let's uh, recompose here. You know what, I think I better go do some editing. I don't know how much we've got uh, going on here, but uh, does it make a difference? Well, it sort of does. I like to try and keep the videos at about, you know, 20 minutes or maybe a little more. They've been a little more lately. Okay. Now, about our compressor. Now, this is the way I see it. Well, speaking of seeing it, you know, I don't think I've ever, in fact, I know I haven't. I was just wondering what kind of a, a valve is on the bottom there, and it looks like something that can be just turned, turned with your fingers. Uh, or is there a bit of a socket there? I think we can probably turn it with our fingers. Anyway, I, I doubt very much if there's very much water in there. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> I think what we'll do what we'll do is we'll we'll leave it for for a while, and uh, I was going to say let it fill up, but it's it's not going to fill up, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, then we'll just see how much water drains out. I think if I open it very very slowly, we can let it drip into something, and it isn't going to just all of a sudden spray all over the place. <clears throat> At least that that's the plan. Now. <clears throat> I, I said way back a couple of days ago, what, what is the reason why you drain your compressor? Well, the obvious is to get the water out. And uh, uh, the misconception may have been mine. I was thinking more in terms of the, the, the water would rust the inside of the tank. But the most obvious reason is you don't want water coming into your, into your, into your spray gun, <laughs> into the airbrush. That's, that's the most obvious. That that's, it was just too obvious. I didn't want to say it even. Okay, now let's 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 envision if this thing was to get half full of water, it's still not going to come out here. Out here, I mean, it's not like there's a siphon that goes right down to the bottom of the tank to pick up the air. The air comes. The air comes here. The only way you would get water in your system is if you were to tilt the whole thing at an angle. Well, yeah, then it would. But, I mean, the, the thing's got to get a lot of water in it first, okay? All right. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't bother to drain your tank. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, I, it, it's sort of like uh, back with older computers, and the big deal was you haven't defragged your hard drive? <gasps> I defrag my hard drive every day. Okay. Uh, I think you get my point here. I think I think this draining the the tank is, especially like here in Winnipeg, where where the air is dry. Uh, now, now maybe someplace like where where it's very humid, uh, you know, like a ninety percent or more humidity. Uh, yeah, then it might be a good idea. But uh, uh, just let me push stop for a minute here. I gotta get my thoughts together. <laughs> now one of the viewers reminded me that when air is compressed it gets hot. 
Well, I've, I've known that for, I was going to say since I was a kid, but since I was a teenager anyway. That's how a, that's how a diesel engine works. You know, the cylinder comes up and quickly compresses the air and the air gets real hot and then the fuel is injected into that hot oxygen impregnated air, you might say, and, and it, it burns rapidly. And uh, yeah, I knew that, that, it, that it gets hot, okay. But what happens is that when you've got that hot, moist air going down to this tank, which is probably room temperature, and to, to that hot air, it's, it's cool. The, the tank feels cold. And so the, the water then will condense on, on the inside of the tank and it runs down to the bottom. Okay, so that's what's happening there. That's how the water gets in there. And because the, you think, well, why doesn't it just evaporate back into the air again? Well, when the air is under pressure like that, it, it for some reason, it just doesn't. Uh, if the air was to get under vacuum, yeah, I remember I was talking about a vac the vacuum chamber. I kind of know the uh, mechanics of this, how, how it works, you know. Sometimes I don't always come across too, too smart, but I kind of do know how it works. <laughs> Now, uh, this, this particular uh, regulator on the bottom, it has uh, what, what I would call a sediment bowl, but it's not really a sediment bowl, it's a more of a water trap. And, and it, it, is, it is sort of a sediment bowl, there's a little, a little filter there as well. And now I think that filter is also in some way helps to catch moisture. Anyway, the, the moisture then drips off of this, this thing and down into your water trap. And then if I was to push on this, I, I think it's under pressure right now, so it's probably not going to want to go up. Well, I'm not going to do it because what if it goes up and doesn't go back down? <laughs> it, it probably wouldn't. Uh, okay. Happy now? <laughs> Okay, I got the same same deal on my big tank downstairs, and that that uh, that uh, regulator that looks exactly like this it was hanging over there on the post. It also had it. I never ever saw water in it ever in the four years I had it hanging over there. Uh, <laughs> so uh, now, mind you, it was coming from uh, about fifty feet or more of hose from the down from the downstairs. Uh, you know what, I'm, I'm beating this to death, uh, and people are thinking that I don't know what I'm talking about, and that I'm sort of maybe uh, making light of something that is rather important. Yeah, drain your tank, but it's not the big deal that people are making out, at least not here in Winnipeg. Okay, let's carry on with the model. I know you're all mad at me now, right? Okay, it is getting on here this afternoon and the sun is starting to shine in across the model table again. Kind of nice. Now, I was going to turn the ship around because this is basically the center of the of the model table and I wanted to work on the stern, but if I do that, then the perspective is going to be wrong. So I like to keep the perspective the same and that way there's, uh, it's easier to find where to put parts. Now, these are, these parts are all pretty obvious. I don't think I could accidentally put them in the wrong place just because the ship was the opposite way around. But uh, I think we could probably just uh, safely move everything up here so that the stern will be in the center. Okay, let's watch it. Nothing's going to catch. We'll uh, move Barnacle Bill. And we should be able to just slide everything up. So that the will be at what area first? Um, right here. Okay. Well, that's we're going to be working right here. So that's about right. All right. And we'll get my uh, armrest here. And what is going to be the first thing we're going to do? We want to put down some more K20s. Um, well, we, we've done that on camera, we've done the M1s on camera, but we have not done a K33 and a K8. 
and they are tiny tiny and delicate and they're gonna go right here by this uh, winch okay let's uh, let's find them and see what we can do I'll, I'll do that on camera and then uh, the other stuff we'll do off camera okay I drilled out the holes to put our six boxes in except for on this side I haven't put them in yet it's supposed to be one one two three but to my surprise and I don't think I've ever come across that yet trumpeter forgot to put a hole right here right where I'm touching right there there's supposed to be a hole there for the counterpart to this one right here and um, I think what I'm going to do is because it's going to be hard to get the hole in exactly the right place I'm just going to nip the peg off of one of those boxes and uh, just glue it flush down onto the deck that that should work won't be it won't be as strong but if if I'm careful and don't bang it it's not going to fall off Okay, now I have nipped the, the peg off of the bottom of that box there. And, uh, let's try not to smear it all over the deck. Let's get it to lay down nice and straight there. Okay. Oh. Too much my way. Okay, let's let's just let that meld. And that's gonna be a nice strong connection. And that glinting of glue that you see there, that you won't see that once it's dry. K33 goes in these two holes here, here and here, and K8 goes in these two holes right here. I think I can move in probably a little closer when it comes to dropping them down. But we're going to be having to do that in uh, the next episode, folks. I'm going to cut today's episode off. So thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.